Oh, the microphone was muted. <laughs> hey everyone, we're gonna go live in the next couple of minutes. We've just, uh, we always go live before we're ready to start the show so that the notifications get out and our audience can come and join us. We'll be with you real soon. So you want to know how to stretch your hip flexors. Well, in today's video, we are going to take a deep dive into hip flexor mobility and flexibility training. And we're going to go out on the gym floor and demonstrate our three favorite loaded stretches for the hip flexors. All that and more coming up right after this. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image. Hey everyone, in case we haven't met, my name's Rad Burmeister. That's my brother, Yanni Burmeister. We're the co-creators of the UMS, the Unified Movement System, and the co-founders of Unity Gym, where we teach you how to nourish and move instead of diet and exercise. And today we're wrapping up an awesome week all about loaded stretching. Loaded stretching is a, was a really new concept to us. Um, I've been stretching for a very long time, maybe... Um, uh, 24 years and honestly I got 90% of my gains in the last four years since I learned about loaded stretching. Now that's a big claim but I'm telling you it's true. If you saw me at five years ago I couldn't touch my toes comfortably and I couldn't come close to doing the splits or the pancakes or any of the good stuff that I do right now. So we've been doing some really good stuff this week and we're rounding it off today with some stuff to do with the hip flexors. It's a really hot um, area of the body that a lot of people ask us about. So we're going to show you a beginner, intermediate and advanced loaded stretch and make sure you stick around because we're going to go out on the gym floor right now and show you the stretches but then we're going to come in and talk about the biggest insights about this stuff and also the biggest mistakes that we make and also tell you how you can get started on your loaded stretching journey. Yeah, absolutely. And we're also going to, uh, I think actually Rad just uh, summed everything up. You have to excuse today if I start to sneeze or go into a coughing fit. I'm, uh, I've just changed because I've been uh, Sorry working guys, I don't on, know. Our, on our renovations again. 
I'm building a new entrance way, and uh, we also don't have Richie here yet. He's back tomorrow. So Rad and I are producing the show, acting and starring in the show, and uh, directing the show. So and turning the phones off that were <laughs> that yeah, I was meant to turn off. Everything you off. have to excuse us. And at the same time as well, Yanni, we're in the middle of a real deep renovation. So Yanni is uh, working his butt off, which is why he might seem a bit depleted now. He's putting his best uh, happy face on, but um, <laughs> he's uh, he's been working really hard. Anyway, let's get out there okay so let's um let's get out on the gym floor here you go yanni you're going to be controlling this one yep. if you want to put it on an angle where people are going to see something interesting okay here we go so <clears throat> let's get out on the gym floor and um i'm going to show you these stretches so we're going to i'm going to show you these three stretches so for those of you that just want to get straight into the good stuff get to see it straight away and then i'm going to uh demonstrate some really good, oh, sorry, we're going to talk about all this. We're going to, um, you know, talk about the theory and everything. So the first one we're going to do, this is, remember, we're, we're doing beginner, intermediate, and advanced. Now, if you're even at an intermediate level, what I'm about to show you is going to seem really, really easy, okay? So you're going to get under uh, a, a gymnastic ring like this. If I hold it in my left hand, I'm going to have my right leg forward. And then from here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a, a step as big as I can um, to forward and I'm going to go into a split squat. Now this is actually, I could have this higher if I wanted to and what that'll do is it'll actually bring the stretch more into my hip flexors and into my lats as well. And from here, if I go this angle, so from here you can see what that does is it pulls on my lat like that but I can control how much weight goes in my leg. Now for me I can obviously I can do this loaded with a, with a lot of weight because I'm quite strong and I've done a lot of this stuff. But if you're a real beginner, going down into that position is very, very hard. Even just keeping balance is hard. So by doing this, we're still doing a loaded stretch because my body weight is, is in the muscle and my muscle has to uh, be under a contraction to hold me up, but I'm controlling it. I can control how much load is going into that muscle. So what you want to think of is, Keep your chest as upright as you can. When you're doing a hip flexor stretch, the more you can keep your chest up, the better it's gonna be. And believe it or not, this is actually probably the tightest part of my body. So if it was actually Yanni demonstrating these stretches, he's way better at these ones than I am. Um, this is a really tight part of my body due to something that I've got going on in my lower back called spondylolisthesis and a pars defect. And when we go back into the studio, we're actually gonna talk about the relationship of the hip flexors to lower back pain and lower back problems. If you've got lower back pain and lower back problems, these stretches are really gonna save you. Okay, the next one we're gonna do, this is the intermediate one. This is called the active hero. So from here, I'm gonna sit down on the ground like this with a gymnast, gymna you don't have to have a gymnastics ring, anything that you can hang on to, but these are just unreal. They're the, this is what they're for. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna um, bring my feet wide enough that my bum and hips can go between them and my knees. I'm going to push my, you know what, I'm going to take my jumper off for this because it's really important that you see the position of my hips. Hang on. So the positioning of your hips is critical when you do hip flexor stretching. It's really, really important. There's other stretches. It is important for all lower body stretching, but for hip flexors it's like, it, it, like the wrong position with your hips, you're not gonna get anything. So, look at my hips. What I'm gonna do is create a posterior pelvic tilt, and at the same time as I do that, I'm going to think of bringing my um, chest down towards my pelvis. So two things are happening here. I'm tensing my glutes and tensing my abs, and I have to keep my chest down and keep my hips forward. And then what I'm gonna do from here is, I'm gonna lower down using, a, see, I'm not doing anything here, using my own body weight eccentrically, and then I'm gonna to help to get back up. Then I'm gonna really engage there, lower down eccentrically, go as low as I can, okay? And then I'm gonna get a bit of help there on the way up. Now I've done a lot of this, so I can actually do this without any assistance but for a lot of you, that's gonna be way too hard, which is what this is for. So try and use as much of your own body weight on the way down, and then um, use the rings to assist you to get up. 
Okay, so Jan is asking me to emphasize the position of the hip here. So if your hip goes into an anterior pelvic tilt as you go down, it's too far for you. So what a lot of you will find is when you're up here, you'll, you'll get into the posterior pelvic tilt, you'll engage your abs so that your chest is coming down like this, okay? And then what's gonna happen is, so if you look from here, so like this, then as soon as you start to go down, you'll start going like that, and if you do that, you've gone, like that's too much for you. And what you need to do is just, like for a lot of people, just working that range is gonna be enough, okay? Now, for anyone that really knows their anatomy and physiology, you're going to say, oh, that's not a hip flexor stretch, that's a quadriceps stretch. Yes and no. It's a rectus femoris stretch. Um, it is a quadriceps stretch, but the rectus femoris is a part of the quadriceps and the rectus femoris is a part of the hip flexor complex as well, which is why we do this and we include it in our loaded stretching for hip flexors. It, is, um, it has been a massive part for us. Now bear in mind, we're not showing you the only stretches to do for hip flexors, we're just showing you a couple of different varieties, okay? And this is a really, really good one. Now the advanced one that we're gonna do is called the uh, diagonal stretch. And this one is hard for a lot of people. We do teach this to beginners, but it, there's some contraindications that you have to watch out for. If you've got knee problems, this can be really challenging for you. So remember that in this series, we're showing you a beginner, intermediate, and, and advanced. This is not something you wanna go straight into, okay? So what I'm gonna do from here, I'm going to turn my feet out to a 90 degree angle. So um, like that. Okay, and then from, I'm going to go this way so it's a better angle probably for the video. And then the line that my, that intersects, that my heels intersect, I'm going to step back on that line with a really big step. Take note of how far back I've stepped here, okay? Now from here, I've still got this front foot turned out at a 45 degree angle. My back foot is facing forward, so my hips are facing straight forward. I don't have my body twisted this way. My hips are facing that way. What I'm gonna do now is shift my weight onto the back leg. If my left leg's back, I'm gonna put my left hand on my chest and I'm gonna reach back and try and touch as far down as I can. Now for me, because I've done a lot of work on this, I can quite easily get to my heel, but at a starting point, you're actually gonna bend the front leg. That makes it easier. And you're gonna go just behind the knee. Here's the mistakes people make. People reach down like this, see how I'm leaning forward? That's a big mistake. You need to lean back and rotate. Once you can get your knee with your front knee bent, you go for the mid calf. Once you can do that, you go for the foot. And then once you can do that, you straighten the leg and repeat that same process. First for the knee, then the calf, and then the foot. The keep. Okay, so those are your three stretches. Yanni's saying we're gonna run out of batteries on our um, mobile camera here. So those are your three stretches. Now, if anyone that's watching, um, if you've got any questions, put them in the comment uh, section. And even if you don't have any questions, let us know your name and where you're watching from so you can, we can give you a shout out. It's uh, really important to us that we uh, know who's watching and so we can say hi to you. And also hit the like button. It really, really helps our algorithm. So smash up the like button. Yeah, I really hope you guys do that for us. It's, it's only gonna take you two seconds to uh, leave a comment with your name and hit the like button. But that said, if you've got any questions with anything that we just showed you out there, please put it in the comments section and we'll answer them for you um, when we get to the end of everything that we're going to talk about. So Yanni, you want to... Now, um... now what I want to talk about is the relationship <coughs> between lower back pain and the hip flexor complex. As Rad said, there's a variety of hip flexor muscles, the psoas major and minor... Well, we've got to look there. That's right, I'm looking at the wrong camera. We, we... <laughs> um, the psoas major and minor are the two cameras that... Uh, <laughs> are the two <laughs> muscles... It hasn't been a we, long week here for us at all. ...that we think about uh, most. <laughs> but... Um, and I'm smashing my third coffee of the day too. Uh, but the um, qu quadriceps come into play as well quite heavily. So we want to really be stretching dynamic stretches that stretch the whole muscle sling, not just com compartmentalizing the hip flexors. We talk about that concept of co compartmentalizing the body a lot and how we dislike it. Uh, this is something that's super important. Now, 
What, what tends to happen when we sit down, thank you very much, Beth, we appreciate that. Uh, what tends to happen when we sit down for prolonged periods in chairs like Rad and I are doing now is these hip flexor muscles sit in a shortened position and over time they become slightly deformed because of that. Uh, the, the things, and we always talk about this a lot, um, Dr. Phil who comes on the show regularly will say this often, we get um, best at what we do most. So if that means sitting with a short uh, hip flexor complex, then it shortens to adapt to that. Uh, the problem with that is that then when we stand up again, it causes pain and discomfort. The other thing is when we sit down, the, we, the, the glutes, which is a stabilizing muscle that was really designed to be switched on most, if not all of the time, because when we're squatting, which is our natural resting position, which our, us Westerners don't do that often anymore, even in that resting position, the glutes are switched on. They're just simply not designed to switch off all the time. And so when a muscle switches off all the time, it slowly over time sort of disconnects from the central nervous system and becomes weaker. You experience muscle atrophy and you experience just a, a very a, a serious weakening of the neural pathway to that muscle system. So that combination of weak glutes and tight hip flexors is one of the major reasons why people suffer quite badly, uh, often referred to as lower cross syndrome, um, tightness and discomfort in the lower back. And uh, if you combine that with dysfunction in the core and the abdominal muscles, you've got the perfect storm for really quite major deformity in the posture and, uh, and pain and discomfort. And I know Rad has had to deal with quite extreme variations of that. Uh, I've experienced the opposite where I had very tight hamstrings, uh, weak hip flexors and uh, weak glutes. And it's, yeah, it's a major problem. And it's one of the probably, you know, leading causes of, uh, of low back pain, or at least the start of what causes lower back pain. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the, I suffered debilitating lower back pain. Like I'm talking uh, in my 20s, I used to have to take, I would take painkillers, um, pretty strong ones, about as, as strong as you can get over the counter in Australia without having a prescription for them. Uh, I would take them before I went out to a social event where I knew I'd be standing up, which is, you know, any social event like a barbecue or going out to a, a, a social gathering with your friends. I would take them before I went out when I was experiencing no pain at all because I knew that if I was on my feet for more than 10 minutes, I'd be in such bad pain. Do you remember when I was like that? Do you remember? Oh, yeah, yeah. And I used to have to always sit down on chairs. Um, uh, do you want to just show him where the high cups machine is, Yanni? Okay. I used to always have to sit down on chairs when we'd go out for um, uh, a social club event because I just couldn't stand up on my feet for, for a long period of time and I had no idea what to do. Um, this is before I became a personal trainer and even for my first, um, I'd probably say 10 years of being a personal trainer, I didn't really understand how to deal with this stuff properly because I hadn't put my knowledge into... Um, into uh, practice, and uh, Yanni just had to run off there. Sorry about that, guys. But do you um uh, do you remember that? Remember when I used to always Absolutely. have to sit on the side, and yeah. it was it was really you know really affected my social life. And it wasn't until I understood the relationship between tight hip flexors uh, and lower back pain, and even and and other muscles in the hips as well, that man did I because I was always trying to stretch the area where I felt the pain. So my lower stretching my lower back, constantly stretching my lower back, and getting massages on my lower back. And it wasn't until I started exploring the tightness in my hip flexors that I got uh, permanent relief. And now um, at 41 years old. I almost never get lower back pain. And I get lower back discomfort, but I don't get lower back pain. It never stops me from doing anything um, that I love to do. And um, yeah, it's I just it's I just gotta I just gotta stop and pause for a sec because we've got UMS royalty on the live stream here. Yeah, Blakely. Uh, we've got one of our key administrators from our UMS in, inner circle um, caught us on the stream. Blakely Harney. So brother? Blakely saying finally caught you alive. What about uh, tight, restricted psoas? We'll, we'll uh, answer that question in just a sec, Blakely, but thanks for tuning in, brother. Any of you guys that are in our Sakarina, as you would know, and uh, I think uh, Jermaine Singleton, I'm pretty sure you're in our um, inner circle as well. You guys would know Blakely is one of our moderators and one of our star pupils. So uh, Thank you all for joining us and chiming in and letting us know um, who we've got on the yeah. stream. And if we've got too, any new nice viewers, um, let us know to. who we're talking to, where you're watching from, and hit the like button, please. It means so much to us. It's only a couple of seconds of your time. Um, so do you want to keep going or do we want to answer Blakely's um, question? 
Uh, you can answer Blakely's question. Jer Jer um, so, Jermaine, thanks for tuning in, brother, from Charlestown, SC. What's SC? That must be a state in um, America. Yeah. Um, you have to let me know. I'm not so clued into the 52 states. We've only got um, eight of them in Australia. Maybe. And I even have to correct myself because most people think we've got seven, but the bloody ACT, the Australian Capital Territory, is apparently its own state. So. Yeah. We, um, uh, we, I spent a month just exploring California and a little bit of... Um, uh, we went to Vegas. What state is Nevada? Nevada, yeah. Um, and I thought it would take a lifetime to explore the whole of the US. Yeah, man. Like it is oh, man, it's such a big You country. can do it in one holiday in Australia. <laughs> well, kind of. Or you can live in Australia your whole life like we have and still never have seen 10% of it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, so, Blakely, I'd say for the SOAS, like, I'll be honest, personally, um, I don't, um, South Carolina, all right, sweet. Um, <clears throat> I don't... Um, That's actually more obvious than, than it looked. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, um, Jermaine. I didn't realise there was a Carolina, though, in South Carolina. Maybe that's the same state, but you're just referring to living in the South. Anyway. Um, so, Blakely, I, I, don't, I, um, I don't usually differentiate between the psoas and the iliacus. I know that if you're a, um, a physical therapist and the way you're going to massage and treat muscles, you might differentiate. But as far as stretching... Um, for me, I've always just done hip flexor stretching and that's, you know, in, in the fitness industry, we call it the iliopsoas because they both join into the same muscle on the femur. It's only when they, they only split when they cross the hip. Uh, yeah. into different muscles. So I stretch them the same way. And the way that I stretch them is, as you would know, the diagonal stretch is one of my favorites. Um, the, uh, you know, honestly, the heroes, the, the active hero that I just showed is actually a really, really good one because when the rec fem is tight, it really prevents you from being able to get a good iliopsoas stretch, mm -hmm. a good hip flexor stretch. So that's a really big part of it. Another one that I really like is, um, I like getting a physio ball um, into my um, psoas. So I go kind of from the, um, the iliac crest, I go inward just a couple of inches and then I lay down on it and you just kind of move around until you feel that kind of a oh, deep sensation. And I've found that that's really helped. How does it go? Shut up, you idiot. <laughs> and, um, mm. the, uh, and then um, the diagonal stretch is by far one of my favorites. I love the diagonal stretch. Um, and also, I can't remember if it's in the end range strength program that I've created for you, but I'm pretty sure it is the um, extension uh, extension lifts, the uh, the lunge extension lifts um, with the focus point. Um, um, that's an awesome one for the uh, for the I, I think Blakely's referring to the drills that he he likes to do, which is like trigger point and really digging in and releasing the psoas muscle, which is uh, absolutely um, beneficial. Yeah. Uh, especially if you get a massage therapist to do it, they're hard to get to really because you got to push through a lot of um, exterior muscle tissue or superficial muscle tissue to get into the psoas. Uh, and so it's, it is difficult to do, <coughs> but uh, you can absolutely do it. What we've found, and this um, ties into what Quok's suggesting or, or asking in his question there. Welcome, Quok. Um, and and uh, JD, uh, Jada and uh, Edwin, Jada Crosbury and Edwin Breed. Um, thanks for tuning in from over in the States, guys. Um, thanks Beth. for making the time. And, and Beth, Beth yes. From um, Pennsylvania. Yep. Uh, listen, um, when you release the hip flexor and psoas, you need a very a small um, um, compression point. So what we found to work really well are fat grips. Fat grips are a, a piece of sort of rubber that fits over dumbbells and barbells. If you haven't seen them before, they come in two sizes. Uh, there's a really? You use a fat grip on yourself? Yeah. And I use the hockey good. ball. The hockey balls also. That's what my, I was going to get to. So My favorite one is a hockey ball. And the reason why a hockey ball is about the size of a tennis ball, but it's rock hard. Yeah. And yeah, man, uh, uh, thanks, that's, for, thanks for letting me finish. But that's yeah, well, right. usually yeah. I'm the one cutting rat off. Yeah, that's uh, right. I'm yeah, give you, a taste you, you need medicine. a small point. So, like the ultimate, the absolute ultimate is a massage therapist elbow. But um, you know, yeah, you've got to dig right through all of the superficial outer layers of muscle tissue to get in there and find it. And I can guarantee you that it is one of the, if you've got tight inflamed hip flexors or uh, like psoas, it is one of the most uncomfortable things you'll ever experience. It is horrific uh, to get done, but it feels really, really good afterwards. Uh, 
So Karina is um, asking on your 18 minute stretching routine, if you are doing one of those stretches or a loaded yeah, nice. version earlier, in your workout, do you skip it when you come to the routine at the end? I have been. Look, Karina, the beautiful thing about our routines and when you combine it with your workouts is that they're totally customizable. So you absolutely um, can change it the way that you see fit. And if you've done enough volume on one area of your body, it doesn't matter if it's in the routine that we've created for you, you can move on to something else. So that's, um, uh, that's, um, um, Okay, sorry, sorry guys. So um, you might do you want to, you can just click what you need to there, Yanni, if you're reading it. So um, the, uh, yeah, you can absolutely change your routine. Karina, can you just chime in? Let me know, do you have the loaded uh, mobility routine or the loaded stretching routine or do you only have the 18 minute stretching routine? Can you just chime in and let me know, please? So yes, to answer your question, yes, you can modify the 18 minute stretching routine at the end if you've done that stuff already. Of course you can. Um, so what's, what's Blakely saying? Oh, he's just saying, um, I'm bang Definitely on. Definitely in I'm the image. Right. Uh, <laughs> and it's a, it, they're a pain in the ass to release. Yeah. Uh, look, yeah the, the, um, is, Blakely, yeah. this is why we like loaded stretching so much for everything, but specifically for things like hip flexors, because the concept of function and force on the muscle works really well with the muscles that are really hard to release because it, it, it ties it to a movement. And the body likes movement. It likes to understand what you're trying to do. If you just keep poking and prodding it and trying to uh, bend it in isolation, it kind of goes, well, what's the point of this? The, your body is a very clever, smart thing. It's an insane, I have a background in engineering, so I look at everything as a machine. Uh, your body is by far the most sophisticated machine on the planet. It is incredible and it's very good at figuring things out if you give it the right stimulus. Um, and that's why Rad and I are so big on these loaded uh, stretches because the, the very nature of them hacks the system. And I know some people don't like the use of that word, I love it, but uh, it really is true in this case. <coughs> you know, we've been taught to sort of stretch certain muscle bodies and lie on the floor and isolate them and do all this, but it really doesn't work. It does not deliver very good results. And for, for multiple reasons, and I elaborate quite deeply on this in my article, my blog that I've written to, back, to, to go out um, after this show to our inner circle, but I'll tip on a couple of the elements as to why loaded stretching is so good. First and foremost, the nature of lowering yourself down in an eccentric contraction and then holding an isometric contraction makes it near impossible to overstretch. And we've been beating the drum of finding your sweet spot, or if you read my blog, sweat spot, over the whole week. <laughs> um, and it's really, really important to do so because if you overstretch, remember, you get the opposite effect. You, your body kicks in the safety reflex mechanism earlier than when it did last time and you actually lose flexibility. So finding your sweet spot or sweat spot is super important. But how do you do it? The easy answer is with loaded stretching because the nature of eccentric and isometric load makes it harder to overstretch. Now, second to that is another bonus that happens, which is that the nature of contracting a muscle whilst you're stretching fatigues the central nervous system. And that fatigue helps to delay the reflex again. So you, 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 get, you get a double whammy from the concept of loaded stretching. And then finally, the, the, the final reason why it's so effective and so much more effective in our opinion than any other method of stretching is because you are strengthening the muscle whilst you're lengthening and stretching it, which is so important for functional range of motion. If you just wanna be able to demonstrate the splits and never have to do anything with it, then passive stretching will do just fine for you. But if you actually care about your performance and your ability to demonstrate those movements, let's say you're a uh, martial artist and you want to be able to jump into roundhouse kicks, flips, things like that. Let's say you're a sprinter and you want to be able to hit full tilt at full stride and not risk tearing muscles or any type of athlete whatsoever, you practice the UMS or just calisthenics or gymnastics, then end range strength is critical for you. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's a game changer. It really, I hit plateaus for decades. I mean, I was doing all the stretching that I was taught in martial arts and I was doing it for over a decade and I got mediocre results at best. 
and it wasn't until I learned loaded stretching. And when we created the 18 minute stretching routine, that was the first massive breakthrough that we all had with our flexibility. And the main reason why is because it was a daily routine. It, was, it, it just created the consistent habit and it hit all the major muscle groups in the body. But the truth is, um, the, the 18 minute stretching routine, it would more accurately be called the 18 minute mobility routine because it is more mobility than stretching because it's just taking your joints through the full range of motion, which most people have never done a routine like that before. So when they do it, they get an amazing initial result from it yeah. um, because doing daily mobility is just, is really amazing. But truth be told, as far as marketing goes, most people don't understand what mobility is and people understand what stretching is. So we call it the 18 minute stretching routine because it just connects with people easier. It makes it seem like it's not something that they don't understand people. and it doesn't confuse them. Whereas we have actually, Karina, it's funny, if you go and log in now to the 18 minute, mo uh, sorry, to the loaded mobility routine, I've now changed the name of it to the loaded stretching routine because that's more accurate of what that routine is. That's not a mobility routine, that's a stretching routine, but it's a loaded stretching routine. So once we uh, got that initial result from con consistency and a consistent habit, we then plateaued again and we weren't getting better and I started to learn about loaded stretching and we created the loaded stretching routine, formerly known as the loaded mobility routine, and we seriously made some improvements. We yeah, all leveled up, and our, and our tribe, our members went through the same thing because we, we removed the 18 minute stretching routine as the warm up, and we implemented the, eight, uh, the loaded stretching routine as the warm up, and people just went, they leveled up so much. And that opened up the floodgates for us to start to explore loaded stretching, which is when we then, um, you know, created the mobility masterclass programs that we do and we all started you know nailing the pancakes and the middle splits and front splits yeah. and back bridges and all that really cool stuff yeah. and and it was the biggest game changer for us without yeah, a if, doubt if if the 18 minute stretch routine was um, impressive the when we introduced loaded stretching it was revolutionary it it, it, it and don't get me wrong, it's important to give the 18 minute stretching routine credit where credit's due. It, it delivered an amazing result for all of us and all of our tribe. But the, when, once we introduced the loaded stretching, <coughs> it was just like, whoa, we're really onto something here. And it also gets you thinking. I mean, when we call, we call loaded stretching, um, uh, it's a blanket term. It means eccentric contraction stretches. It means uh, in range contraction, um, contract, relax, contract, relax, agonist contract. It moils. means moils. It means, you know, um, it means isometric contraction drills. There's so much under that umbrella that we started to explore and realized, oh my God, there's a lot to stretching that we did not know. And uh, it gave us the tools to put together some really awesome programs, which some of you guys have uh, experienced already. You and know? they work. Um, uh, so I'm just going to say, I just realized, Quok, we didn't answer your first question a while ago. Would you, Quok asked, um, would you do some trigger point release with a foam roller or a physio ball on your hip flexors before you start doing some of these stretches? Um, to be honest, I actually find that the foam roller is it's completely ineffective yeah, for the, too, for the hip big, flexors. A, it's too uh, big. surface area. The physio ball, absolutely. You could use a foam roller on your quadricep, and I would recommend that, so doing the rectus femoris. Uh, but then when you want to get, you do what we explained before with the physio ball for the hip flexors, and then go and do these loaded stretches. Absolutely, that's a really good thing to do. Um, I We love trigger point release at the start of our workouts, um, and that's something that we do, but we have more time to train than most people. So um, yes, if you've got the, the time the to do it. The answer is absolutely yes, but with a smaller surface area. Yeah. Um, just give me a second. Yeah. Just so I'm just going to jump in and answer a couple of these questions here. So Quok is saying, uh, uh, Jada Crosby is saying, great content as always. Um, thank you, brother. Really appreciate that. Um, Jermaine Singleton is saying, I have only made progress through loaded and isometrics, which still sounds weird to me um, as I started with yoga. Never made progress with static. Yeah, man, I can relate. Uh, honestly, um, as I just said before, we, <coughs> we yeah, I, I never really made great progress with static stretching. And um, yeah, I don't know, I don't know a lot of people that have, that didn't make that progress when they were young, when they were, um, yeah, teenagers or children. So um, back to Eden is saying, what if I don't believe in massage? Uh, you'll have to clarify what you mean uh, by that. I'm, I'm wondering why you would not believe in massage and what relevance that has to what we're um, talking about here. Can you clarify for me? 
Um, Jermaine Singleton is saying, I'm trying to break through a hip flexor plateau at the moment with lots of strengthening. Yeah, um, so strengthening your glutes is also going to help strengthening your glutes through hip extension. We've got some really good stuff in some of our programs that we, uh, that we use. Have you got any of our programs? Jermaine, can you just chime in and let me know? I'm pretty sure I've seen you in our um, UMS Movement Mastermind. Let me know which programs of ours you've got. And Karina is saying, cool, was a little confused by the name. Love the functional aspect of it. This is, this is what drew me into your programs. That's awesome, Karina. Thanks so much. Um, for that. So do you want to get into, Yanni, you left your, your notes out there, I think. Do you want to get into the um, uh, what the biggest mistake people make is? And then we can talk about um, our Friday Frenzy. We're actually offering, to, as of today, for the next 72 hours, we're going to be offering the loaded stretching program with a bunch of extras for 50% off. So it's normally 49, sorry, it's normally $99 um, US. It's going to be $49 for the next 72 hours. And we're including the phase one of the UMS online coaching program. We're including the ultimate warm up routine, which is, they're both amazing programs. I honestly, I, if you haven't ever purchased any of our programs, you are going to be blown away at how much content you get for $49. And guess what? If you don't like it, you can just tell us and we'll give you your money back. No questions asked. Um, we're so confident with what we do. We get so few people asking for their money back that we're really happy to do it. No questions asked. You don't even need to tell us why. Um, and then there's a bunch of extras. Our intermittent fasting program. Um, it's a total of $495 worth of our programs for only $49 and you've got 72 hours um, to get it. So there's going to be an email going out um, to our database today to get that. Yeah. Um, but anyway, let's talk about so the... Um, the thing I want to talk about here, and this is really important, and we've tipped Sorry on it guys, a little bit a this hammer. week, uh, is that people, a lot of people watch what's going on on YouTube, maybe watch what we do, uh, watch what their peers do, and try to replicate that immediately. And often, and I saw one comment come up earlier in the uh, show by one of, uh, one of y'all who said, I'm going to try that third one, which was the most advanced version of the hip flexor stretch. And this is, uh, this is one of the most important things that you need to understand. It's imperative that you understand, <coughs> as we spoke about yesterday, your training age and how that um, affects your ability to, to train, to, to stretch, and, and, and increases your risk of injury if you try to do things above and beyond your capability. It's incredibly important that you learn to find your sweet spot when, tra when stretching so that you don't push too hard, so that you don't overstretch, and so that you don't stifle your progress. And finally, it's insanely important that you, once you know those two things, you regress your training back to suit where you're starting from right now and then use progressive overload to move forward at the right pace. We do not want to see people diving in and trying the hardest possible exercise all the time. Although it sounds fun and it feels fun to challenge yourself to that level, you can't imagine how much we see people stifle their progress by overdoing it because they're training their ego, they're not training their muscle systems. And uh, you know, it's something that we see all the time. We're, we're lucky that we can control that in our environment here, but we still see it often from our tribe and we have to pull on the reins and say, man, your body is not capable of doing what you're trying to do. What's the point of practicing something so incorrectly? No one benefits and most likely you injure yourself and you end up you know, uh, having to, to regress way further than you ever needed to in the beginning. Uh, anyone that watches our shows, you'll, you will have heard, regularly, you'll hear us saying this stuff all the time. And you know why? Because Yanni and me were exactly the same. We were no different. For a very long time, we were just trying things that were way beyond our um, capabilities and we stifled our progress so much. I swear to God that I would be able to, if somebody followed the exact guidelines that we laid out, didn't question us, did what we did, you could achieve what I've achieved in a tenth of the time. Yeah. Honestly. Agreed. Honestly, you could. Agreed. Um, if you just follow the instructions and don't do things, you know, outside of your scope of practice. And that, um, no, not your scope of practice, outside of your realm of um, what you should That's be working on right now. Age. Yeah, your Above training and age. Beyond your training age uh, and how seasoned you are to the movement. I'm, and I'm gonna continue with this, but I'm just gonna quickly answer your question. Back to Eden, um, you think massage only works short term, but not long term, what do you think? Um, I think, absolutely, I think if you, 
get massage and you think that massage on its own is going to fix you, then absolutely it's only going to work short term. Do I think massage is good? Absolutely. It is one of the only things a good sports massage that has allowed Yanni and me to perform at the levels that we do without a good sports masseuse like Phil White that's here, I would, straight out, I would not be able to do what I can do. I'd be in pain all the time and it's a critical part of what keeps us on our feet and performing at the levels that we do. But do, do I think that it would uh, um, not work long term if that was all you're doing? Absolutely, I agree with you 100%. Yeah. Um, Jermaine, um, so you haven't got any of our programs, you're um, out there, you're, you're going to check out our content. I'm telling you now, man, if you're interested in this stuff and if you are even considering to jump in and get some of our programs, get the Friday Flansy that we're doing today. If you don't like it, we'll give you your money back. Simple as that. Um, it's going to cost you 49 US dollars. You're going to get an insane amount of value. And are you on our mailing list? Let me know in here. Let me know if yeah, you're on guys, our mailing list. The, there's, the, the next two pages on here is the article that I've written that's going to go to our mailing list today where we always link the show. Uh, but it's really, it, it includes an elaborate version of our cliff notes and uh, the, I really dive deep into the key inside of today, the message that I want you guys to take out of this. So if you if you do want to get on the mailing list, the easiest way to do so is to download our free flexibility blueprint. That'll put you into, I mean, quite frankly, the mini course that you get after that, that follows on from that is epic. It's insane. Yeah, it you get we a five day mini course on the key points of our program. And then you go into um, getting my daily blogs after that, which are, you know, the key insights from these shows. So it's just insane levels of content. And you get first access to our flash sales when we go live each weekend. So uh, there's a lot going on there that's yep. worthwhile. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to have to wrap up now, Yanni. Yep. Um, yep, anything absolutely. else that you want to say? That's it. Yeah, listen, that's guys, it. I'm, I'm going to say it one last time. Based on, like Karina, you've said it there, our messages are so important, you need to keep hearing them. You, Karina, is talking about this concept of not doing things that are too hard for you. I'm telling you right now, if you want to start on your journey with loaded stretching, there is nothing better than the loaded stretching routine that we're offering on this um, Friday Frenzy sale. It covers the entire body. It covers every joint in the body. Um, and it is amazing. You're going to learn some really, really cool stuff. And you will, if you practice it, you will make massive, massive gains and it'll be safe. It's a yeah. really good program. Absolutely. So um, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you've only just caught the channel, um, the show now, or if you haven't hit the like button, please do um, leave a comment. Let us know where you're watching from. And we will, it's Friday in Australia, so we'll see you next week. Have a great weekend. Yeah, awesome, guys. Take care. Great week. Health is about performance, not just body image. You better be willing to accept what you're going to have to do to get there. We'll start focusing on movement goals, strength goals, flexibility goals. When you nail that skill, it's there forever. The body image goal doesn't get you that far. It's the consistency and frequency that's going to get you there. It's not the intensity. There's no shortcuts to mastery and movement. Destination doesn't change overnight, but your direction will. The gym is not the place to beat up the body that you hate. It's the place to build the body that you love. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image.